So CP, here we are entering game three inside Madison Square Garden tonight. Who do you think is in a better spot entering game three this evening? Well, right now, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers, Ben. I mean, I was in attendance in Cleveland for game two, and, and it was an absolute bloodbath. Uh, they were the aggressors in that game. Their defense really stepped up. They showed you why they were the number one defense in the NBA. And I saw three things. Number one, they attacked the head of the snake, which was Jalen Brunson. They blitzed and trapped him on the pick and rolls, got him off of his rhythm and forced Brunson into a lot of tough shots, especially early on in the game. And I thought that had a cascading effect on the team just in terms of taking them out of their rhythm. Only 16 assists in this game total for the Knicks. Secondly, they were uh, the more physical team this time. I mean, I saw plenty of Knicks, you know, looking at their mouth, checking for blood because they, they were just dropping like flies out there. The Cavaliers won the rebounding battle in game two. And just were really the aggressors, as you expected them to be, uh, being down one and having more of a sense of urgency. And number three, defensively, I just thought that they kept the Knicks offense very stagnant. You know, the, the Knicks allowed those traps to set in. They they turned the ball over a ton, which led to over 25 Cavaliers points off of turnovers. And the Knicks role players were rendered ineffective. Uh, R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Quinton Grimes, Josh Hart, uh, still not able to score the ball, especially from downtown. And I thought that was the recipe for the Cavs' victory in game two. So the Cavs enter game number three tonight in New York as a slight series favorite, minus 134 outright, but it's New York as a slight favorite at home inside MSG. Just a point and a half CP on that spread. What is the biggest adjustment you expect the New York Knicks to make tonight for game number three against Cleveland? They've got to make quicker decisions against this Cavaliers defense. This Cavaliers defense is number one in the half court for a reason. And number one, it starts with the, the Twin Towers, Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. But also on the perimeter, when they send those blitzes and the traps on the pick and roll, the Knicks cannot wait for that defense to set in. They've got to move the ball and move themselves a lot faster to force the Cavaliers to rotate because there's always going to be an open man. So the Knicks have got to make quicker decisions against that Cavaliers defense, and hopefully good things will follow. Number two, they've got to be the aggressors again. The Knicks were one of the best teams in the NBA in terms of second chance points. They've got to attack the glass, especially if their shots aren't falling, and get better opportunities, second chance opportunities, and especially from three. That's another thing from this series, Ben, is that the Knicks have not shot better than 30% from downtown. That is not going to get it done against his Cavaliers defense that does not allow a lot of paint touches. And so those are some of the keys. And then lastly, the Knicks role players. Typically in the playoffs, the old adage is that role players will typically step up at home. Emmanuel Quickly, who was just snubbed for NBA six Man of the Year, you hope he's got a chip on his shoulder because the Knicks desperately need his offense. Quentin Grimes, they could use his three-point prowess. R.J. Barrett, although he's been facilitating well, they need R.J. to get some points up on the board as well. So look for the Knicks role players to assert themselves in this game. And when you look at the leaders of that Knicks rotation, Jalen Brunson has the highest points prop for game number three tonight. It's 24 and a half. Julius Randle, just a point behind that at 23 and a hook. CP, in your estimation, who is more important for the Knicks to win game number three tonight and have success the rest of this series? It's Brunson. He's the head of the snake. He's the point guard. He's the stabilizing force for this team. He has to manage that balance between going out and getting his shots, but also setting up the team and getting the offense into a rhythm. Luka Doncic is no longer here. This is his show at the highest stage. So that balance is going to be quite key. What I saw in game two was him hunting his shots a little bit too early in the game, and I thought that had a cascading effect on the offense. So he's got to get them going early. Also find some rhythm for his shots, but he's also the closer. And that's why I say he's more important than Randall, because when it comes down to crunch time in the fourth quarter, if this game gets tight, it's number 11, Jalen Brunson, who's going to have the ball in his hands, who's going to have to deliver for the Knicks to get a W in game three. On the other side for the Knicks defensively against Cleveland, we saw Donovan Mitchell go off for 38 points in game number one. He was facilitating very well in game number two with 13 dimes. It was Darius Garland leading the way for Cleveland in game number two with 32 points. Right now, CP, Donovan Mitchell still the favorite to be this series' leading scorer. He's averaging better than 27 points per game. His prop tonight is 20 nine and a half as you look at the two rosters and you look at what the Knicks need to do 
defensively. What is the key for Tom Thibodeau's team on that end of the floor? Similar to how they attack Jalen Brunson is how they need to attack both Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland. Give them uh, uh, various looks. Blitzing them in the pick and roll, trapping them in the pick and roll, sending hard double teams, uh, hedging hard on, on those pick and rolls, showing hard on those pick and rolls, because you can't let those guys get into a rhythm. Both Mitchell and Garland are two of the best spot up shooters in the NBA, both around the 84th percentile and pull up jump shots. So you really can't give them much room. That means. Quentin Grimes, R.J. Barrett, if those are the primary defenders, get over those screens. Do not give them a lot of airspace. In the pick and roll, in that drop coverage, Isaiah Hartenstein has to get up on the level to show those guys a little bit, you know, hey, you you can't get into the paint and you're going to have to take tough shots. That's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to try to get these guys off of a rhythm uh, because they can kill you. As you saw in game two, when Garland wanted to elevate his game, he could do so. This is a bona fide all-star as well. And so, you know, Spider and Garland are going to be uh, t- two tough players to tangle with, especially at Madison Square Garden. You hope Donovan Mitchell doesn't try to put on a show at home. You know that he might because that was a storyline this offseason, trying to bring the Spider back to the Big Apple. Jalen Brunson, though, leading the way now for the New York Knicks. So here we are, CP. Friday night Knicks in the postseason, in the NBA playoffs Inside Madison Square Garden. We are tied at one game apiece in this series. Cleveland, again, a slight series favorite. CP, the rest of the way, what is your series prediction now for New York and Cleveland? Well, Ben, I said Knicks in six, and I'm not moving off of that prediction. Right after this interview, I'm getting ready to shoot down to Madison Square Garden, get changed, get to the Garden. The energy is going to be electric. The Garden's going to be rocking on a Friday night. I'm saying Knicks take three and four. They go back to Cleveland and lose a tough one in five and finish it back in the world's most famous arena. Knicks in six, Ben. Knicks in six was the prediction to start. It remains that way. The second most likely outcome, by the way, from the series correct score odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook is for New York to win in six plus 320. The odds expecting this series to potentially go the distance as well cp the franchise the creator of knicks fan tv getting ready for a huge friday night game inside madison square garden cp thank you so much enjoy what is going to be one of the most electric atmospheres we have seen this postseason tonight gonna be a good one ben thanks again and have a great weekend